How's it going guys? Welcome back to Outdoor Power Tech. Today we're going to be um, cleaning out this car on this Husqvarna 125B. Customers complaining that it's hard to start sometimes and that it won't stay running uh, when it gives it, when it pulls on the trigger it just wants to bog down on him. You know the classic bark, bark. So uh, we're going to Take her apart, pull the carb off, and see what we can do. I done checked the compression on this. It's 145 psi, which is plenty enough. I'm going to go ahead and dump out the gas. Yes, that was his gas filter that fell out, so we're going to replace that and probably the lines too because they're, they're probably bad. Let me see if we can get that in here. Pull it out. Feels good to me. I'll go ahead and go ahead and replace that gas filter. Got that replaced. That's pretty self explanatory. I'm just going to go ahead and do that right now so I don't forget about it. Alright, guys. Put the lid back on, gas tank. Set the gas tank side. Start by taking off your air filter cover. All right, we got two five sixteenths inside, right there, and there. We'll go ahead and Take those out. Don't lose them. I'm going to set them to the side. See if I can to get to all this. You want to take off your housing right here, and I think it is a four millimeter. Yes, yeah, four millimeter Allen wrench. You want to take off? Can't remember if I take that off right there. We'll take these off first. You got one. Zoom out for y'all. Here, here, here. I know these two bottom ones. Maybe these also. And 
the reason why we're doing this is you have to get to the linkage to your throttle to be able to pull it off, pull the carb off. Yeah, we're gonna take these off. They're usually not this hard to get out. Yeah, they're not they're, they're not usually this hard to get out. Look like they have some Loctite on there. Blue blue Loctite. All right, this pulls off, and then this pulls off. All right, now, I'll show you where all your lines run. Okay. This line going to this side of your carburetor right here goes to your top of your primer bulb, bubble. And of course that will change if you take this primer bulb up. And if you take it out and spin it around upside down, it, it will change um, where it hooks up at. And then this bottom one, it goes in down here on the bottom side. Let's see here. I'll show y'all how to put that back on. The bottom line coming out of your primer bubble goes into your tank right here, like so. And then the small line small black line right here this line right here comes out of your gas tank and goes into the bottom of the carburetor all right Yeah, we're going to have to put all you guys' signs on this. That's what we'll do. that to the side okay here's your linkage right here what I do is I just take my throttle lever out like this and then take the Z-Bin out of the carburetor set this to the side that piece that fell out was this 
It goes right here. I don't know what that is, what it's called. It's uh, some type of grounding. But anyways, all right. Let's pull our carb off. All right. And then we got our little gas line on the back right here. Right here. All right, and our carbs off. All right. Set this to the side. the carburetor off and I'll be right back. There we go. You can see the dirt in there. Right there. Okay. I'm going to go clean that out. I'm thinking that might just be all that's wrong with it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and clean it out though. Now I'm going to screw out my low jet, and what I do with this is, I screw it all the way in, no, I screw it until, let's see, let me get a black marker, where is my black marker? I screw it in, as I'm screwing it in, I count the turns, and if it'll make it easy for you, if you have this tool, you can put a line on here like that. That's what I do a lot of times. You put the line at the very top like so and then you count the turns. One, two. It's two turns exactly. So screw this out. I'm gonna go clean out this, or I'm gonna clean out this jet. Wear safety goggles when you do this. All right. Now we're gonna screw this back in all the way. And we're gonna remember. Let's get screwed in all the way. Okay, it's snug. Pull your tool back off and make sure you don't get no carb cleaner on your line because it will wipe it off. Put your tool back in where that line's at the top and we will go one, two. All right, now we're just going to do the same thing with the other side. One, two, Two and a quarter. All right. Let's 
Pull it back in. Okay. Now remember, we're going to go two and a quarter. So one, two, and a quarter. All right. That's done. If any of your gaskets look bad, or any of these look bad, if your flaps right here are bent, curled up, or down, you need to go ahead and just replace the whole. If you're doing this, I'd go ahead and put a whole kit in it anyways. I keep most of the stuff in stock. But from what he was telling me, I figured he was having a gas issue. And then when I dumped my tank out and the fuel filter came out, I knew that it was clogging up on the screen on the inside carburetor. Okay. Now let's put this piece back on. It goes like this. It can't. It, it, you can't put it on backwards. I mean, you can. I mean, if if you if you held it in place like that and smash it down, I don't know you could. But see, even if you tried to line those up, those holes in there to that, see, it's not lined up right up here. So let's go ahead and get her back on, like so. All right. Now, we're going to put her back on. I always, with my thumb, pull this back so it will be out of the way. Okay, she's back on. Let's get her two screws. Put it back in. All these gaskets are f perfectly fine on this unit, so I'm... I'm not having to replace those. I am going to replace that metering diaphragm though. Get these snug. Okay. Now let me see if I have this metering diaphragm and gasket in stock. Alright. Alright, when you put this back on, you want to look carefully. Your gasket is on the bottom. And when you get your kit, you also want to make sure there's metering diaphragm, this little nipple in the middle right here. Right there. You want to make sure that it's smooth, like low to this plate right here. They have a version that's longer, that sticks up probably a quarter inch. You want to make sure yours is the one that's not sticking up. It's like a maybe a sixteenth, if that, um, if that makes sense to you. The other one sticks up to about right there. It's pretty long that nipple. All right. So we know our gasket goes on first. So you want to put it on like so. Okay. You see the hole right here? That's where the hole lines up on your gasket, on this hole right here, on the gasket. All right, now let's put our meter and diaphragm on. Make sure everything lines up good. And then your cap, it goes on. You see that little piece sticking out right there? That goes in that little hole right there okay so it's going to go on like so okay like that so it should look like that make sure your holes are clear 
But when you put your screws in, if your diaphragm slid over and these holes are covered, you got your diaphragm not lined up right, and you want to make sure that's lined up perfect, okay? All right, let's put in our screw. Then this screw. Let's get snug on one side, just finger tight. Then do the other side. And then get it snug. Don't stab yourself. Okay. All right. And if you do get a whole rebuild kit, that little tiny screen inside the carb. I'll show you on another car, but I might not take them apart. I'll show you on another car that I have right here, so I don't have to open that one back up. Your little screen down here, you can get a pick and pick it out like this. And then when you put your new screen in there, you just lay it on the top. Just lay it on there. Let's see if I got a screen here. I'll show you. Okay, your screen will look like a bowl. And you want the bottom of the bowl. to go down into the hole like so and then you can get you a drill bit that fits that perfectly inside and just push down gently and tamp it down until it's in there okay make sure you spray everything out real good all your holes all right now let's get this carburetor back on this unit See if she's going to work for us. Gonna pull some of this gas line out because there's. You know what? I'm gonna just I'm gonna replace that whole gas line. Might as well, right? Yeah. Get our new gas line. Let's see if I have some. Yeah, there we go. All right. Let's get our
if you're doing a lot of repairs, I'd invest in one of these tools right here. Cut your line at an angle. If you do do this, hook it in your tool. Then just fish your line through the unit. Can y'all see that? Alright. Now put our gas filter on our new line. If you're having a hard time getting it on there, you can put some oil on it, some lubrication. But what I do is I pinch about a half inch away from the end of this filter and just push. And I'm still not pleased with how that is going on, so. Trading oil on it. That oil's not gonna hurt nothing, guys. Now I done got my gas filtered brown from all the dirt on my fingers. There we go. Alright, drop her in the tank. Pull out that excess. Okay, now I'm going to put my carburetor up here at the angle I know it's going to go, like so, and then I'm going to just go ahead and cut my gas line however much I think I need. It's always better to cut more. Gas line coming from your tank, the small one, goes in this side of your carburetor right here, okay? Just slide it up on your carburetor, all right? Now, we're going to slide our carburetor on your two bolts right here. I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way so you all can see. Slide it on like so. Okay, now I'm going to replace this line right here. The other one seems good. This one right here, I'm going to go ahead and replace it. This line right here on the top is the shorter one. You have two nipples sticking out of your primer bulb. The shorter nipple sticking out goes to the top of your carburetor. Okay? So just remember that. Because if you replace, if you pull this um, primer bulb out, you can turn it opposite direction. So just remember that the smaller nipple coming out is primer bulb you only have two the smaller nipple you put your gas line in it and then it goes to the top of your carburetor okay let's get your you want to get your choke lever lined up with this so it'll slide through like so make sure now your gas lines are pinching behind it let's see here this one right here needs to go like that behind it. You'll just have to look at this yourself when you put it on, okay? Make sure none of your lines pinch. Slide that on. Okay, guys, y'all following me still? 
All right, now we're going. Now we're going to put this gas line right here on the top. All right, got that done. Okay, you can go ahead, go ahead and screw your carburetor on right now if you want to. We'll go ahead and do that for y'all. So y'all be done with the carb part. Get your socket. I always put it on my socket like this and kind of hold it up at, a, at an angle until I get to where that bolt is and then put, my, put it on there. Just get finger tight. Do the same thing for your other one, which is kind of hard because it's at a downward angle. Just take your time. Don't let anything aggravate you. Get this snug. Don't crank down on it. Just get it snug. Okay, guys. All that's done. We'll go ahead and put our blower housing back on. Just take note to where this is at. Cause this can't, this will fall off. It's, it's just sitting there right now. Take note to where it is on your unit, okay? Sorry about that. This cover right here, just take note to where it's at, okay? Okay, first let's put our linkage back on. Goes on like so. Okay, see that like that? Okay, remember that it goes like this, okay? Okay, turn it like this. Put your linkage, your Z bin in there. Pivot it up. And then like that, like so, okay? Very, very, very easy, okay? Let's go ahead and put Our grounding rod that's what I'm gonna call it because I mean it's a ground wire run tool I don't know exactly what I don't know if that's supposed to discharge the spark from your hand as a safety feature I have to look into that all right slide your cover on okay make sure everything lines up and nothing pinches And this will most likely be the most aggravating thing you do. Because for some reason they almost always never want to go back together right. Okay, y'all still following me on this? Y'all still see? Alright. When you go to put this on, if it won't snap on, just hold it tight and pull your cord. Okay? All your all your screws are the same. I'm pretty sure. No, no, they're not. You've got three with bigger threads like that, just like your standard threads, and then you have three. Or you have four that are machine threads. They smaller threads. The machine ones go in. Yeah, the machine ones go in your um, recoil assembly right here because that's screwing into metal, okay? All your other ones are screwing into plastic. So it's like a standard thread. If that makes sense to you. I know all y'all mechanically inclined guys will know what I'm talking about. Uh, but for like a young person or Somebody that hadn't done it so a while. Let me explain this a little better. The standard threads will look like a sheetrock screw. If that makes sense to you. If you ever seen a sheetrock screw, it has uh, the threads are further apart on each other. And the machine 
threads are closer together. Machine threads. Okay. And this standard. Okay. Let's get this in here. Machine thread ones. You have four, so it, even that can help you out. You got four, and four goes in this recoil assembly. You got three extra ones that go on your housing there for plastic. Okay. And it is raining at my house again. I live in North Carolina, and then last week, folks, we had 65 degree day. Well, then we had raining. We had six tornadoes touch down between Charlotte and my house that same day, and then the next day it snowed. Y'all, y'all can look it up. Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, or Canapolis, North Carolina, tornadoes. Luckily, nobody was hurt. A lot of homes were damaged, but nobody was hurt. Had a lot of flooding, a lot of flooding. To get these snug, like everything else, don't over tighten. Okay. Now, when you get to put these plastic ones in, you just screw it in until it stops. Like like so. Don't over tighten them because you will strip the plastic. Our air filter back on. Thing about looks new. Put this back on. Okay. Spark plug gap. I usually do these about 25 to 30. Yeah, 25 to 30 thousandths. Get it snug. Don't 
I'll strip it out. Make sure she's on. And prime the bulb ten times. It might take more than that because we rebuilt the carburetor. There we go. Okay. Right. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah, once you rebuild it, you just gonna have to keep priming it until it fills up your bubble. Then, once that's all done, because you gotta get all the air out of the system. I'm looking at my gas line right now, there's air in it still. But once that's all done, you do your normal directions on how to crank it. There you go, guys. And remember, on these units, you always have to go back to half choke when you crank them. They just—that's just how they are. Alright guys, I hope you liked the video, and uh, till next time, I hope you have a blessed day, we'll see you later.